Man, I can definitely appreciate your sexy, but that's about as far as it's going to go. Your spiritual sexy. If you don't look good, that took her from this attraction here all the way to here. I said, I've never met a woman what? that wouldn't just pray for the sake of praying. But I do know my wife has like celebrity crushes, man. Um, Usher being one of them. And I asked, I was like, yeah, babe, if you were at this concert, what would you be doing? She's like, yeah, I'd be dancing on Usher. Oh! I'm like, <laughs> you ain't never going to Usher concert. In 2024, you better make sure she ain't AI. <laughs> live in Miami because there's, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of stuff man. now. You, you gotta make sure, sure you gotta make sure she's, she's not a male. Yeah, right, that's right. what I'm saying. Okay. For real. And I didn't believe in dating, and so there was no. Oh wait, hold on, stop. Oh. What's going on? I agree with you. Oh, we can talk about that. Wait, you guys don't believe it. <laughs> no, I do not believe in dating. It's not a biblical concept. I don't believe it's not in biblical. dating. Look at Troy, yes. We, we, we gotta, gotta go there. We gotta go there. We gotta go there. Glory to God for good times, big laughs. The godly life we strive. Turn it up for the king right here. On Sunset Friday Live. Let's go. Hey. Sunset Friday. Sunset hey. Friday. Sunset Friday Live. Sunset Friday Live. I'm your host today, Anthony Hackett, and I got with me my guys today, uh, right here on the first episode of Guy Talk. Uh, I'm excited, man. How y'all feeling? You ready? Great. Good. Let's go. Ready. So listen, you guys. First of all, I got to introduce because uh, you know I got some good, high quality fellas here with me today. Uh, first on my right, this is my guy Troy. Uh, Troy is a financial coach and uh, really one of the coolest guys I know. Great family, great dude. I appreciate, appreciate you being appreciate here, my it. guy. Oh, man, it's my pleasure. <laughs> uh, right here to his right, we got a good friend of mine for many years. I think I've, I've definitely known Kanil the longest, uh, but this is Kanil right here. He's an educator and an avid golfer. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, That's yeah. one of the things he do. He fancies himself to be, you know, Tiger Woods part do. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> he says he says there's no one good at golf, but you know. No one. Okay, all right. Uh, but that's my guy, man. I appreciate you being here, Canel. Pleasure. And of course, to his right, we got my guy, my main man, my basketball buddy. <laughs> this is Mario. Uh, he is a good friend, also a basketball friend of mine. We be hooping almost every week, right? Yes, sir. Getting it in. Getting Hoop it with in. these young boys. Hey. Uh, no. <laughs> he's a therapist, uh, family man, man of God. So uh, that's my guy right there. Appreciate all you guys being here. And actually, here's a fun fact. So all four of us, we're all currently, I mean, we're all coming from in some way, shape or form, pastoral type ministry. Mm -hmm. But we're all currently not serving <laughs> in a pastoral type ministry right now. Uh, so all of us come from that, but we're not all currently doing that. So you got some, you got some, you got some, uh, some good stuff here, you guys. So let's get this party started, you guys. All right. So listen, you guys. Uh, we're gonna jump right in this. Today's topic is spiritually sexy, and what exactly mm. means to be spiritually sexy. Now, my wife, uh, if you haven't seen it already, she did her episode on Girl Talk of the very same topic, spiritually sexy, and you know the girls held it down. But when I was watching, I was like, you know. We need a guy perspective. You know, hey, like we, you know, indeed. we can't just have the ladies have fun. Like there's there's a guy perspective too. Plus they was getting on us a little bit. <laughs> mm. I, so we got we got to have our own perspective on it. Uh, so let's just kick this thing off real quick. I want to ask you guys, uh, what is your definition hmm. of spiritually sexy? What you think? Um, well, defining spiritual sexy, there's obviously this erotica that comes to mind when we say the word sexy mm. and you know i'm not talking about bible verses on a g-string sexy <laughs> but what i'm talking about is that this person has a way about them that attracts me to god mm. this person has mm. something about them that, that you know spiritual sexiness can be a moment or it can be sustained and for me to move to spiritual intimacy um that person must first appear sexy in the sense that there's something about them that that um, creates this endorphin effect inside of me that makes me want to draw closer to God or sees them as I might see God. That's dope. Okay. What do you think, Mario? Man, you know, uh, just navigating today's climate. And I've been married for 12 years now, right? So, but just kind of looking out there, peering out there, mm -hmm. seeing what you know what's going on all around us. We live and we breathe all of this. 
man, to take it back to some basics, like being kind, mm. being gentle, patient, like, man, those things are seem to be hard to come by. You know, uh, when you're looking at the opposite sex, when you're when, when when you're out there kind of playing that field, so to speak. And so when I think about spiritually sexy, um, you know, all good things, good and perfect things come from the Lord. So we attribute the patience, the kindness, you know, when uh, as a as a man of God, I'm attributing those qualities to an individual who I believe is now connected with the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the spirit is, is going through them. So, I mean. But I don't want to negate the fact that, you know, oftentimes there's like this dichotomy, like you can be sexy, and but you can't be spiritual, you know. And I'm like, nah, man. I mean, I, most of what drew me to my wife was the fact that she knew how to throw that sundress on. Mm -hmm. But when I went to her apartment, she had her Bible open and stuff was marked in it. That was crazy to me. Okay. <laughs> you know, so, I, you know, it's that... That that took that threw me for a loop, buddy. So yeah, I think I, I I think that you can't just you should not divide the two. I think it should be together. You should not divide the sexiness and the spiritual part. No, really. No. Okay. No. Okay. We'll get back to that. What do you think, Troy? Yeah, let's address an elephant in the room. I let's be honest, fellas. We tend to be very very visual, right? Yeah. Probably a lot more visual than our lady counterparts, and I think that. Um, what usually attracts us to women or what's usually sexy to us is the exterior, generally speaking. However, I think there's something deeper, and I, I think, Mario, you, you hit on it. There's something deeper about the fruit of the spirit in, some, in, in, in our women that is just can be a very, very sexy thing if we're looking for it. Uh, so just that gentleness, that's the fruit of the spirit, that yeah. love, that, that uh, faithfulness or what, what, whatever other fruits of the spirit there are. There's something about those qualities in women, if they have that, that's just like, man, that's extremely attractive, even more so than just the body. Now, you know, the exterior is always going to be there. Yes, but sir. I think that those things is what really makes a woman spiritually sexy. Okay. Uh, we're going to touch on the, the physical sexy part of stuff. We want to talk about that too. But um, when I think of spiritually sexy, so I think of like a, a, a woman who, it, it, for me, it's just all spiritual. It's all just God. Like the, it, spiritually sexy is like, wow, I'm attracted to the love of God you have. Hmm. I'm attracted to the, like the fact that you want to go to church. You want to pray. You want to have devotion. You want me to lead you in your spiritual walk um you, those are like for me personally that's those are like i'm, I'm, I'm like whoa snap i'm getting chills think about that joint mm. right now like that's <laughs> that's the kind of the the sexiness that i like spiritually sexiness um and unfortunately i feel like you know personally let me know what you guys think do you think that it's common in in females and women that you'll see that spiritual sexiness you're looking for, or is it rare? Um, is it rare for you? Is it common or more rare to see a spiritually sexy woman? Because you can see sexy women, physically sexy women, all, all day, right? Yeah. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But spiritually sexy, is that common or is that rare? I, I think it's rare, to be honest. Um, I think there are women who make attempts at it, but... You know, with, you can't hide the fact that if you're unspiritual, eventually that's just going to come out. And if you're spiritual, then those things will eventually stick. Now, thankfully, I've been out of the gate. The dating game for a while, I've been married for almost 15 years now. True. And, I like um, these years. Yeah, you know. man. Uh, <laughs> but from what I hear, the dating pool is just, I hate to call it this, but it's trash from what I understand. And uh, one of the reasons why it's trash isn't because of physical sexiness at all. There's something inward that's missing in not just women, but but in men as well. For me, you know, I, I take it back a little bit. And um, I think like this conversation about spiritual sexiness um, in the Bible begins in like Genesis 2, 25, where it says they were naked, but they were not ashamed. And I think that there is a spiritual, you know, by the time we get to Genesis 3, they're naked and they're saying, I'm hiding because I'm naked. And I believe that there is a spiritual virginity that is often lost and we don't see that vulnerability even when we interact with certain uh, women there's not that questioning of the bible or that willingness to expose what i don't know in order to have a deeper relationship i think there's a lot of pretentiousness 
that, and, you know, often when we think about spiritual sexiness, where we would observe that is maybe in the church. And what you find is that people are dressed up real nice. They'll shout real good. But the reality is, is that night they may be in the club somewhere. Or um, that sexiness, that spiritual sexiness is not sustained because you look at social media, you look at your interactions with this individual, and it's more of a form of godliness than it is a serious, continual desire to be in the Word and to build something intimate that is spiritual. Mm -hmm. And so um, for me, I think that um, that's where we may miss it, and it's not as common. It is rare. I think it's rare because there is a, a, a guilt and shame attached to sexuality as it pertains to church and church culture, like Christianity, right? And, and so I believe that it has suppressed um, women's expression, uh, uh, their feminine expression, which is sexy to us as, as, as men and in the masculine. Um, and so half the reason why they may be in the club at night not, not that I'm inviting or, or co-signing for women to come to church any old way or people to come to church any old way, but there's so much suppression, I think, that goes on in shame when you step into Christian atmospheres that they then, people, not just women, people, but for this topic, women, then feel like there's a whole other side of me, you know, that is suppressed. And I don't know what to do with that, right? Because I also think that men look, you know, good. I also believe that that man is handsome or whatever the case is, but I can't even express myself. So when you find a woman who's comfortable in her femininity, in her, in her sexuality, understanding that, but in her spirituality, man, that's rare. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, the Bible said, who can find it? I mean, that's not the context of it, but using that language there, like, I think that's really rare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you on that. Um, for me, like you know, first of all, I think it's I think I think spiritually sexy women are very rare, mm -hmm. yeah. like very rare um, today. You know, I mean, twenty twenty four. I feel like they're very rare, but I, I feel like that's just because I think spirituality is rare. Yeah, yeah. in general, <laughs> like you know, I think in twenty twenty four, the you know the removing of uh, or the attempted removing of God in everywhere whether it's school even in, in the weirdness how some churches may interact or do things um politics everything just god is just the world's the world's the world's getting bad mm -hmm. uh, and so i feel like that is affecting the type of females we're seeing because you're going to see less people are young people young adults young people um there was a, a pastor at a, a conference he once told me he was a youth director of this conference and he told me 75% of the young people leave the church before they uh, finish high school. Wow. 75% mm -hmm. in his conference, which is a huge conference. 75%. That's a lot. <laughs> like, what, mm -hmm. what's happening? So, so if they're leaving the church at this, at this rate, right, that means that now when they're in college and they're young adults, they're, they're, they're far removed from God or from the church or, you know, whatever. And now that means you're seeing less people who are actually involved in some sort of a, a spiritual life. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just now in the world, you know, and I think that's affecting the type of females and guys. But we're not talking about guys. Today. We're talking about females. <laughs> Those are the type of females that that you're going to find in 2024, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but with that being said, so if if. I think we're all. I think we all did kind of agree that it's it's more rare than common. Absolutely. Is that accurate? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So yeah. if it's more rare than common that we're seeing how we define spiritually sexy woman, um, where can one actually find one? Let's exclude the church. <clears throat> Outside of the church, where can one actually find someone who's spiritually sexy? If you're a man, if there's a guy watching right now, and he's like you know, us who are looking for a spiritually sexy one or who were looking for a spiritually sexy one, where can he find one in 2024? So, so interesting. And I don't know of any, um, any spiritually <laughs> sexy clubs that you can go to. <laughs> right. Let me get you a drink, you know, um, do communion at the bar or anything like that. Uh, what I will say is that, you know, we do have a lot of spiritual 
sexy teases. There are a lot of people that tease it. And I know church is that environment where you see somebody raise their hands and you're like, okay, maybe that person has a relationship. Or that person goes up front and does something, maybe that person has a relationship. What I found is that more intimate settings, not necessarily one-on-one, because I know this idea of Bible study has now gotten a bad rap. When we say Bible study, it's code for something else, right? (laughs) What is it code for? It's the Bible's open, but everything but the Bible's oh. open. That's, that's, what I, that's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. I'm 11 years of oh. marriage now. Um, by the grace of God, we don't, we right. don't do that. Right. But um, what I know is that um, there are intimate settings, whether they're game nights, right? They're mm. group outings where you can do something that's not necessarily secular, right? Walking in the park. You know, the Bible talks about the or to bring the glory of God, the, earth, um, the heavens declaring the earth to fully. Go out in nature, do something together. Go out and play golf. Come on, oh, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nine <laughs> holes of golf with go. anybody. <laughs> but no, on a serious note, but I'm finding things that are um, holistic, things that are edifying. I believe that that creates an environment for you to see where that person may be and to ask these questions, because it's more than just a tease. It's asking questions that lead from just sexiness to intimacy, spiritual intimacy. You know, I, I agree. Now, I think most people nowadays don't use the power of observation well. Um, I think I feel like people really want to just, you know, they see someone and just want to like quickly jump into a relationship or start talking or whatever that first stage of, uh, of relationship is. Let me just caution the audience. Look, take time to observe. Like yeah. observation will tell you a lot. And I don't mean just one day of observation. Look at people, and I, I agree with you, Canil. The, the group setting is really, really great, but also not just that. I think when you observe that person as they interact with their family members, so how do they treat their parents, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, and that will probably tell you how they'll treat you as a significant mm-hmm. other as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that, that's just going to be huge. And I think that spiritually sexy probably starts with, with, op- with good methods of observation. I got you on that. Um, let's transition for a second um, because we're going to kind of get back to being spiritually sexy um, because we need to talk about the guys. Um, but let's talk about physically sexy, right? Mm-hmm. What we, because before you, first of all, the, fir- the question is, so there was a question posed in the girls' conversation, girls' talk, about can guys be physically uh, attracted to someone physically or no, can guys be attracted to someone spiritually without being attracted to them physically? Mm. Is it possible for us to be able to see the spiritual sexiness in someone if mm. they are not attracted to you at all? What do you think? Man, I can definitely appreciate your sexy, but that's about as far as it's going to go. Your spiritual sexy. If you don't look good... I mean, and I'm not saying I'm, you know, Shamar Moore or anything like that, but, but I can I can appreciate that for all it is, and 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 let you praise in your corner, you know. What I'm saying, um, you know, and maybe maybe I have yet to attain a, a level of maturity, but to be honest with you, I mean, like I could I I, I have observed uh, women of God preachers. I was, you know, um, who have stepped up in the pulpit, you know, in the last year. And the anointing was heavy, mm-hmm. exegeting the, the, the text, pulling out, you know, hitting us with the Greek and Hebrew and, and bringing it from a feminine perspective. Right. Mm-hmm. That was crazy. Uh, but, you know, it, it, but what? <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't you know, I had no business trying to see past anything other than that anyway. Yeah. But if I put myself in a single man frame. Hey, man, that's real sexy, Mm -hmm. but I might not think you are. And I'm going to kind of just leave you right there, you know? I'm going to just keep it real. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Troy? I I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We can't over-spiritualize this thing, right? So sexiness or attraction or what have you, um, it it does definitely include physical attraction, physical sexiness. So, you know, I had a a preaching professor in in undergrad. He, uh, He cautioned us young, budding preachers. He said, fellas... Don't marry your prayer partner, right? Mm. That's what he said. And what his point was, don't decide to get married to someone just strictly because they're spiritual, strictly because you're you're attracted Mm. to their spiritual side. That is not a good reason. Now, it's great to start there, 
you know, you should not marry someone who is unspiritual, mm -hmm. right? But if you're not physically attracted to that person, you the reality is you got to wake up next to that person every yeah. single morning. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and who you might find attractive or sexy may not be who I find sexy. And that's okay. We all have our own kind of, uh, you know, who, who we think uh, are, it might be sexy. But make sure that they are also physically attractive to you as well. Uh, but that should be secondary, if I can. But here's the thing. Yeah. So can you grow into someone? Can you grow into a physical, you know, a mm. physical attraction to someone? You know, you may not necessarily start off thinking that person to you is attractive physically, but then you get to know them. Yeah. And then you get to pray and you get to talk and you get to see their spiritual sexy. Can you grow into that, that physical attraction? Well, you say growing to a physical attraction. Um, first, you know, when it says that beauty is fleeting, but a woman that loves the Lord is to be praised. Mm -hmm. I think that there is definitely an attraction that can be increased over time. You definitely can fall in love with someone's soul, their spirit, because of the time that you spent with them. And I believe that that can make them in many ways attractive. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that anybody that may see themselves as physically unattractive should assume that just because... I don't look good to somebody that God is not going to allow that person to be compatible with me mm -hmm. because it's a process, you know, um, physical, physical element. It's a process, spiritual element. It's a process. And so I, undoubtedly, I believe that there are people that you can be spiritually attracted to and not physically attracted to and be able to build something with that person and that God can ordain that thing and bless that thing to the point where that person may not be what your ideal was, but may be the person that you see yourself long-term with gotcha. I want to co-sign with that um, my flesh won't co-sign with that mm -hmm. but my spirit can and the reason why is because uh, I'm, I'm a flawed human being but one of the things I strive to do is listen to what the spirit is trying to say to me and I do not put it past the Holy Spirit on any given occasion mm -hmm. to be like she's the one and and on all of my ideals mm -hmm all of them don't line up to what his ideals are for me. Mm -hmm. But man, my, I would like to believe in hope that I would put my flesh aside if I were in that situation and hear what the Spirit's trying to say to me. And because and I want to co-sign with that on you because I, I don't want others who are watching this to just be like, oh, he hit us with a good spiritual answer. Mm -hmm. No, man, like when you're trying to walk in the Spirit, he will have you deviate from your path maybe more times than not, right? Mm -hmm. And you better listen to him because there are layers and levels to this thing and her face is only one level. Mm -hmm. Her body is really only one level and when you're connected with the Holy Spirit and that's that's when you can live a life of peace because uh, you can have a pretty face in a tumultuous home and that's real. That's big. So I, I disagree, y'all. Mm, come on. I disagree with both of y'all. If you guys are enjoying this video, go on and hit that like button because it really does help us out a lot. Let's get back to the interview. So I think it's impossible to be physically attracted to someone that you're spiritually attracted to. Uh, that, that you can, that, that, I feel like you have to, I feel like you have to have a physical attraction you have to have a physical attraction, at least to yourself. No matter what anybody else thinks of the person, you have to in some way be physically attracted to them in addition to your spiritual attractiveness for anything to happen. Because at the end of the day, if you're not physically attracted, then what you're really getting into is a prayer partner, a, a spiritual person you can connect with. But where's the intimacy going to come from? Like, if you're not physically attracted to them at all for yourself, it's like, Ugh, you know, I can, I love your spirit, but like for the rest of my life, I'm going to be with you and waking up to you. And I got to have some, I got to have some form of physical attraction. Um, can you grow into that physical attraction? Now, that's an interesting question for me because I think you can. So, and that, and this is where I kind of started agreeing with you because now we're talking about the Holy Spirit changing you. And now the spirit is really talking to you like, you know, like you're not really, you weren't really originally attracted to them. Mm. But, you know, you can, I feel like the spirit, I feel like God can definitely change your, your eyes and your spirit and your heart to where you're seeing this person and to you, that person is physically attractive. 
And so there, there, then you'll be able to dive into that. But I feel without the physical attraction, it's mm-hmm. like, it's going to be a weird relationship. So are you saying you think the Holy Spirit can help increase the other person's spiritual attractiveness, but also increase their physical attraction, attractiveness to you as well? Like he can, it's not just like, okay, well, you're kind and you're giving and whatnot. But no, the Holy Spirit can really change a man's eyes I to feel, see. I feel gotcha. 100%. Okay. Yeah, I feel, I feel the Holy Spirit could, I feel God mm. through the Spirit can, if he... If this is the person that's for you, mm. can change your eyes to, gotcha. to to see that person in a way that you didn't see them before, to where you're physically attracted to them. I think God. I mean, it's God. It's you know God. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, he could. Yeah. Um, but I do feel it's necessary to have that physical attraction. Mm. So, so it, I, and, and brothers, I want to get a little bit more personal about ahead, this thing, and I want to really lead with the question, um, especially as men of God, who is it that's choosing? The person for you mm-hmm. is it you or is it God it's simply that and for anybody out there man or woman who's choosing is it you or God is it his list or is it your list and I, and I don't want to make it sound super spiritual but at the end of the day it is so for me my wife we begin by saying beautiful woman beautiful woman right when I initially met my wife she was in the church but not really into the church mm-hmm. she would show up to church but she really wasn't into the church mm-hmm. and I didn't believe in dating and so there was no oh wait hold on stop oh what's going on i agree with you oh we can talk about that wait you guys don't believe in no i do not believe in dating it's not a biblical concept i don't believe it's not in biblical. dating look at Troy. yes we, we gotta go there we gotta go there we gotta go there we have to go there too we'll come back. and i and i, and I, I yeah rather yeah, than give it all up now <laughs> let me share with you what i think is my testimony uh-huh. that i met my wife and i told her you're beautiful but I'm looking for a pastor's wife because at that point, my mind was on this is my my ministry has to involve somebody that's going to partner with me in ministry. Mm-hmm. Right. And she wasn't that person in the moment. So physically, she was kind of what I wanted. But spiritually, she was not. Mm-hmm. There was one day where we were in the car and I was just like, pray. And she said, nah, you go ahead. I said, all right. I pray the next time. Hey, could you pray for us? She said, nah, you go ahead. After about the fourth or fifth time, I said, why is it that you don't pray? And she says, to be honest with you, prayer is so intimate between me and God that I don't feel comfortable just adding somebody else into it. Mm-hmm. That took her from this attractive guy <laughs> all the way to here. I said, I've never met a woman what? that wouldn't just pray for the sake of praying. That's deep. That's but she deep. said, it's so intimate between me and God. Mm. And so in that moment, her physical, spiritual attractiveness increased significant for me Mm -hmm. 11 years later i thank god that he chose Mm -hmm. that i wasn't the one that said you know what you know here's somebody else that looks the part whether you know could dress up like the pastor's wife on saturday and could look like um you know troy i saw your face get a little little weird when canel said i don't believe in dating yeah. And then I, and when I shook him up, let me give one more of that. <laughs> this day, yeah, I don't yeah, like yeah. the day. But Troy was like, hold up, what's happening right there? Uh, and then Mario was kind of like on the Troy side, but like confused as to what's happening. <laughs> I don't believe in day. I don't, I don't think day is cool. Uh, we can get that, but why, why the weird face when he said that? Yeah, no, I, I think, I'm not sure what the reasons are. Uh, so right. I, I, I would we'll like to it. do more digging. However, I know that there's a, a popular book that came out. I think Pastor Joshua Harris, I Kissed Dating Goodbye. I'm not sure if their beliefs are based on that. Neither here nor there. Um, I think that in some Christian circles, dating has kind of gotten a bad rap um, when I believe that dating, as the word suggests, is you're collecting data, you know, you're you're data in um, and you're trying to decide whether or not this person is worthy of the rest of your life to spend with them. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure where you know the the rejection of dating is but everyone has to collect data on that person if you're rejecting you know well you have to go out and get something to eat and go bowling and uh, okay well maybe that doesn't have to happen in order to collect data on the person but i think data collection for your potential spouse is is necessary okay so i think you're going to come from a, a more biblical perspective or something like that mine's is not that perspective i have a different reason why um, so I'll start and then I'll, I'll slide it to you. Uh, I don't like dating because, and, and I have two girls, so I have two daughters. 
Um, <laughs> I, so first of all, I already don't like dating of for that reason. Yeah, um, but but thing, my thing is, this is my perspective on dating, right? I feel like dating is that period between friendship and a committed boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. That, that, that period in between, to me, is dating. Oh, I'm dating this person to see if it's someone that I want to commit to, I want to be with. Go out, do this and that. And I feel like when you're dating, you're skipping the friendship stage and you're going straight into almost a relationship. Because when people are dating now, they're doing boyfriend and girlfriend things, you know? And I feel like doing that before you're really committed to that person, to having that kind of relationship to collect the data, I feel like, look, if you want, I tell my girls, if you want to get to know someone, be their friend. Hang out as friends. I want that to be the mental, the mindset. I don't want your mindset to be, oh, I'm, I like this person, so let me date them as opposed to skipping the friendship stage. No, because once you're dating, you're no longer just friends. Now you're like dating. And it it puts a different spin and connotation on it. So that's my personal reason. I don't want my girls to skip being friends and go straight to dating. I would rather them see somebody that they like. They they establish this friendship. If they want to hang out, they can hang out with groups and other people. And then if you're serious, then that Negro needs to commit to you're the person that I like, and I'm not gonna be dating this person. I'm yeah. gonna, di- I'm committed to this person, and you guys commit in that way. Now you become a boyfriend and girlfriend, in my opinion. Okay. So that's that's my perspective on it. But I'm interested to see what you what you think. Okay, um, dating, and, and to be honest, I've had girlfriends in my life. I've done dates in my life. And I believe that there's a false exclusivity that happens sometimes mm. where we think that that person has my heart, that person and I have a, a future together, when for many people dating is a temporary arrangement. And in our lives, most of us, if we've dated, have probably had multiple boyfriends, multiple girlfriends, going on dates with multiple people. And it seems innocent enough, but to me, when we talk about spirituality, why am I choosing to spend time with this person? And what it is from a spiritual standpoint am I trying to get? Am I trying to get a relationship with them that I feel could lead to marriage? Or am, am I filling the void of loneliness? There are people that you know that are addicted to dating so much that they cannot be alone. Mm-hmm. And that is counter to our spiritual walk. And so for me, dating is not a biblical thing. I don't see people dating in the Bible. I see courtship. I see marriage. What's the difference? What do you, when you say you see courtship, okay. and so what's the difference? Courtship there? is, is, is um, well, first of all, individuals have to be at a place in their life, a state of maturity, where they are ready for the next step of marriage. And courtship happens directly before marriage. So courtship is, I'm committing to marry you. In Eastern cultures, we see this all the time. And in other religions where people will be betrothed to somebody else or somebody will have, um, you know, an arranged marriage mm-hmm. where the person knows this is the person I will spend forever with. And it's not about how good they look right now. It's that we're making a commitment forever. So I, in modern terms, would mm-hmm. you say courtship is like being engaged or more like being a boyfriend and girlfriend? I would say courtship is more like of an engagement. Um, it's a serious commitment saying that when God gives us the, the when, when the right time comes, we will make each other husband and wife. And I believe that when we are given the milk freely, 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 we run into the issue now where there are a lot of brothers and sisters that are just like, why get married? I've already done the physical stuff Mm -hmm. and that didn't satisfy. I've had, I've broken up and got back with that person multiple times. That hasn't fixed the need. And so it's not God centered. It's lust centered. It's what is it? The. The this dating. idea of dating. Gotcha. And I'm not, I'm not saying that there aren't people that have not taken a more spiritual approach to their dating, but I believe that any of us can get lost in this idea of exclusivity with somebody and then end up being more broken than we came in. Okay. What do you think, Mario? Dating or no dating? What, that is the question. Man, I, there's a... Man, Troy, Troy hit it in the very beginning with observation, mm-hmm. and we don't do enough of that in the dating realm, mm-hmm. right? Um... 
And I personally believe, looking back on it, you know, in my dating experience, if you're dating, you're still single. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're and if you're still single, uh, then you know you really don't have much there, right? And, and the dating part allows one or both parties to say we're exclusive. That way, we might be able to enjoy certain benefits of that exclusivity. But outside of that, you're still single because we and 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 what we didn't understand and what we often don't understand is our behavior in our dating phase uh, is not conducive to till death do us part because it doesn't set us up very well for that. Mm. Right. Like it's combustible at best. Like we we today we're today we're touchy feely intimate. Right. And then later in the day we have an argument and we get to separate and even threaten in our minds or out loud the relationship. Man, when you get in a marriage and you're trying to do this thing God's way, you're trying to do this thing according to who you know you married and, and what they have inside of them, today they're not showing up as their best selves. We're not trying to, we're not filing divorce papers every time we have an argument in our marriage. Mm -hmm. But the way we date doesn't do our till death do us part much justice at all. So, yeah. I got you. Physically sexy. Physically sexy. So I remember years ago, man, I love telling the story about Kenil, me and Kenil. No, uh, we, <laughs> we, we, he was in college, Troy. Man. And me and Kenil was driving uh, down the street. Mm -hmm. me and the, I, I was I was driving. No, Kenil was driving. I was past seat. We were driving down the street. And as we're driving, there's this girl sitting at the bus stop. stop man. Sitting at the bus stop. <laughs> sitting on the lollipop. So she was at the bus stop, right? As we're driving by, and Kenil was like, and, and, and the stoplight came on. So now we're at the stoplight. <laughs> me and Kanil were standing, and he's looking at it, and he's like, man, I swear on everything. He said, that's my future wife. <laughs> that girl's bad. So he's at the bus stop, he sees her from a distance. She's like, yo, to him, whoever this is, she's like, bad. So he was like, should I, should, I, should I go say something? I was like, yeah. He's like, should I go say something? I was like, yeah. Then the light turns green. So we have to drive. So he's driving like, Kanil, why, why you act like, why are you going to say something? Why you ain't to say something? He was like, oh, should I still go say something? I'm like, Kanil, turn this car around and go say, you said that's your future, future wife. wife. Go talk to this girl. That's so we're driving. Funny. So he's like, all right, cool. So we already down the street. He turns around. We turn back around, go back. She's gone. Not your future wife. So hold on. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Two things. First and foremost, I had said something to her. I was jokingly, I would I said, hey, you, what's the name's cousin? I said that to the girl. And she responded a particular way, and she had a beautiful smile. I said, aunt, this is my future. <laughs> I said, man, I should probably get a number. Then I turned around, yeah. she was gone. And I drove down that street last week, still looking for her. <laughs> <laughs> she gone, she gone, she gone, brother. She gone, she gone, she gone. She, she must have been an angel. Uh, <laughs> but, but you, you know, and you say that, and I'm like thinking now, again, to this idea of sexuality and this, that, and the other. You can look, you know, they talk about love at first sight. And I don't know yeah, if y'all yeah, yeah. believe in that thing, but you can look at somebody and there's something about them that just draws you to them. Mm. There's something about them. It could mm. be a smile. It could mm. be the dress, this, that, and the other. So when you talk about physically sexy, yes. there are just some people, man, that you look at them and it's just like, I don't know if God has put a type in all of us, mm -hmm. but you look at them and they, yeah, they, they check all the boxes. <laughs> and that's what, so that's, that's, that's the question. And you really answer it for yourself. And I like that answer, actually. That answer smooth. That when you look at someone and they hit all the boxes for you, like that's your definition. Mario, what's your thoughts on uh, physically sexy to you? Like what, what does that mean? And, and how does someone or you determine that? Yeah, I mean, to your point, you know, you know it when you see it. And he saw the one and you looked at her and didn't she declare that. One. She wasn't that one. But, you but know, she was bad, though. She was cute. But yeah. She wasn't my one. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I believe in that. I mean, that's that's an inescapable part of who we are, you know? And, um, it, you know, but in 2024, you better make sure if she ain't AI. <laughs> or live in Miami because there's, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of stuff Maybe. now. You got to make sure, you gotta make sure she's, she's not a male. Yeah, right, that's right. what I'm saying. Okay. For real. You, you okay. know, I mean, we're going there. I, I'll go there. Yeah. I'll go there. You know, but...
Troy, what would you think? Spiritual, I mean, physically sexy. Yeah, you know, it's funny, and I have this conversation every now and then with, with my wife. We, we uh, Rochelle and I, we're comfortable enough with each other to uh, have certain convos about other people. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I have friends, female friends, that are just beautiful, out of this world, drop dead gorgeous. But I'm like, you know, Rochelle, they're gorgeous, but they just don't do anything for, like, if I were mm-hmm. single, I, I, they don't do anything for me. You know what I mean? And it's not even that they're like unspiritual or spiritually unsexual. Wait, hold on, time just, on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> That's your wife, though. You're saying that's my wife. We, so, I'm having this combo with her. Right, yeah. but my question. So you're saying that to her? Hmm? I know you. I guess you probably really mean it. Hmm? But is it true? It like does. if you if you was like if you wasn't married to her, and you were back in the day and you're single. No, they bad, but nah, they don't really... Baddies, but yeah, they're, now there are some, and I don't tell Rochelle this, right, uh, right, but right. there are some who are baddies, and yeah, maybe they, they do do something for me in yeah. terms of uh, just the attractiveness of it. But there, there are some people who are just, you know, on the exterior, very beautiful face, beautiful body, whatever, whatever, and um, it's just like, uh, you know, I if I were single, I wouldn't go for it. It's just not a, a thing, uh, per se. So, I don't know if y'all's wives do this, but Adana... She be doing things, and I don't know if she's trying to trap me, or she's just really <laughs> yes, she's just cool. So Adana, you know, one thing that's, that's great about Adana, I love my wife, and one thing that's great about her, she's not a, a jealous type person, right? She, I don't have that thing to deal with. However, she be saying things like, just this happened just either yesterday or the day before. Just yesterday, this girl walked by, booty was fat. Like, she had a booty, right? Mm-hmm. And Adana, like, Babe, you see her booty? But she say it like, I'm confused. Like, I don't know if I should really... It's a trap. Am I supposed to really look? Always so she be like, yo, babe, hey, look at her booty. So I always I always take a second to think, okay, is this is this the moment where she's like being serious or is she trying to test me? So I'm like, huh? Huh? She said, look at her, look at her booty. I'm like, oh, let me see. And then so I said, well, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. And so I see what I see. And then, and then, and then, in my peripheral, I see this. <laughs> like she's waiting for like a reality. What am I gonna say, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so I'm like, okay. But does y'all, do y'all get that like test, or like, or or maybe it's, sometimes it may not be a test. Maybe it's just a comfort, um, or with a conversation where she can be like, yo, look at her booty, and that. Like, like, I don't even know why they do that, but they be doing that sometimes. Yes. Um, do y'all get that? And if you do, is it more of like a comfort or do you think it's more like a little test to see, you know, she trying to think what you're thinking about? I think our women are always testing us. Always. Even if it's <laughs> like in good nature, or good fun or whatever, I think there's always some sort of um, seriousness, to, seriousness to every joke. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I, I, it was probably very good natured. Uh, at, at, if my wife is, te- if I feel like she's testing me in that way, I'm always, generally speaking, going to be like, nah, I'm not looking. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But probably maybe kind of like one of these. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Nell? Um, I, my wife is like my homie for real. Mm. Like, right. We've done a million times. Look at that booty. I said, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, God did that. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and there's no malice, I believe. Mm-hmm. I believe that though um, the comparison will probably lead, lead to some insecurity. Mm. You know, I don't say look at this guy, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But she feels comfortable enough to have that conversation with me, and and it's in good it's in good fun. I think um, that we can admire other people and know that God has made many things beautiful. Mm-hmm. And so I mean, we're cool, and we it, it can be a test though, like mm-hmm. to, to what Troy is saying. And <laughs> I I just I don't know if I failed or passed. All I know is that. I participated in every exam. And you feel? <laughs> and you feel? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I looked at everybody she told me. To. <laughs> I don't know every time. Kadil, you failed every time. Trust me, man. <laughs> well, I'm going to need a retake of this exam. <laughs> <laughs> I've been diligent to do what, the, what, the, what she's asked me to. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, it's always it's always a coin flip with my wife. I, you know, it's, it's always a coin flip. But... You know, I, I've, I've I've never caught her looking, but I've I've seen her linger maybe at a, uh, a celebrity's eyes or talk about his eyes or something like that, um, and then she you know she has her celebrity crush, um, and then you know she thinks I have mine, 
Um, and so we go, we banter back and forth about it, man. But the truth about it is, is you know, this this just some good looking people down here, mm-hmm. man. And I'm I'm not going to pursue um, any of it or turn my neck all the way around trying to get to see even more of it. But if it if it's in front of me, you know, and she knows it, and and she'll comment on it, and so. Uh, I just don't want to make that. That's just not a, we're not going to make a mountain out of a molehill. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? What we're going to just live in a bubble, you know? No. Nah. So we see it, we acknowledge it, and we keep on going. So um, Chris Brown, yeah. uh, he was, a, he was he, he does this thing where he charges females, I think 1000 or $1,500, take a picture with them. Um, and so one girl, he, there's a picture of Chris Brown, this thing kind of went viral. Yeah. Uh, it's Chris Brown there, and this girl, Jumps on her, on him. He's holding her up. He's holding her like this. She got her legs wrapped around him, and she's taking a picture, smiling. He's like this, right? So the guy, the guy's, the girl's boyfriend no. was like, it became a thing. He posted it. It's like, yo, she out of here. I ain't messing with her no more. Whoop de woo. And then you know, now comes both sides. Well, why are you so insecure that this? She just taking a picture, and then the other side is like that trick over here, the jumping on his man. When it comes to your woman, and and it's a little different than boyfriend and girlfriend because we're all married. Um, but f- from your perspective, where do you kind of land where your comfortableness with your wife looking at or talking about other guys? You know, like like Canel said, you know, I don't necessarily ask you know her about other guys. But she might say, look at that booty, right? It's a little bit different, weird, oddly, because females will do that to us, but we don't typically do that to them. So what is your opinion on that? Why don't we do that? And where is, where is your comfort level on them now looking or talking about other guys? And they're sexy. I think, I feel like, and I haven't really had a lot, a lot of time to think about it, but I, I think because men tend to be so visual that we were probably a bit insecure when it comes to our women being visual or looking at other men. Um, so I, you're right. I don't think I've ever asked my wife like, yeah, what do you think about this guy? Look at this guy's guns or whatever it might be. But I do know my wife has like celebrity crushes, man. Um, Usher being one of them. Usher right? said, okay. <laughs> so she and her, one of her friends keep talking about, oh yeah, we want to go to these Usher concerts. And you know, uh, what's her name got in trouble? Not in trouble, but um, uh, what's this actress name, man? Uh, mm-hmm. In Achille and the Achille and the Bee. What was that name? Oh, oh uh, yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, she Palmer. Kiki Palmer. Yeah. Sure. She was like, I, I think, like dancing up on Usher or something like that. I forgot mm-hmm. what it was. And uh, Rochelle was like, and I asked her, I was like, yeah, babe, if you were at this concert, what would you be doing? She's like, yeah, I'd be dancing on Usher. Oh! I was like, <laughs> you ain't never going to Usher concert. <laughs> That's what it is, man. I don't oh, care. Celebrity, he ain't serious about I don't care. That ain't happening. You're not going to be wrapping your legs around Chris Brown right. just for the picture and it don't wow. mean anything. Wow. And it costs no. you $1,000? No, ain't that. Come on, that part. Right. Ain't happening, man. I have to be honest with the fact that people cheat in their minds before they cheat in the in, in, in real life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so the reality is, is there are lustful thoughts. We're surrounded by it so much pornographic images, mm-hmm. things that are that's, that's, that's so sensual, commercials, about perfume. You tell about perfume. Yeah. And it's just so sensual. Mm-hmm. And so we are drawn into this sight-based uh, affinity and desire. And so for my wife to look at somebody and admire them and even to have a lustful thought, I can't hold it against her, but I do have to remind her that, you know, uh, you made your choice already. Yeah, <laughs> you made your choice already. Mm-hmm. Big belly and all. You made your choice already. <laughs> so look, but but you've made your choice already. I can look, but I've made my choice already, mm-hmm. right? And I think that that's the healthy conversations that we can have because mm-hmm. as we go older, we don't look the way that we, and that's what we have to face as we age, with falling in love with that person. And so the reality is, is that she will always find people attractive and have she, uh, has she acknowledged that people are attractive? Yeah, her and her girlfriend is that man is fine. <laughs> and I just go, is he? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, he don't want you. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 was, um, but um, yeah, I acknowledge it. And uh, I don't necessarily point out people for her to 
you know, but I've asked you, do you find this person attractive? And I think we are honest enough. That's what's beautiful about it, that we can tell each other, yeah, I find that person attractive. And it be that, mm. you know. Yeah. Hey, Mario. Uh, we're going to have problems if if there's a video out there you hopped up on. Right. I, I think I think you just, <laughs> what, are, what are we doing? Right. Right? So, and this ain't even from, a, I'm not afraid to lose my wife. Mm-hmm. I got to put that out there. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and hopefully she's not afraid to lose me. I, anytime fear is a driving factor, it, it, it doesn't have positive long term, term, you know, results. So, so I'm well, not. Wait, af- just for clarity for the people, what do you mean by I'm not afraid to lose my wife? For any I reason. Don't want her to lose me. Yeah, I don't want to. I, I, right. I want my marriage to work. Mm-hmm. But if I, if my wife is out there uh, dry humping Chris oh, okay, Brown, gotcha. yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, um, then then we've lost we've lost connection somewhere mm-hmm. in respect mm-hmm. long time ago. Like there's mm-hmm. something I no longer preside as the head of the household over my family. I've lost respect in my own home and it is now viral. It, even if it was done in public and no, private and no one ever saw the picture and I saw that, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, we, we, have a fund- we have a fundamental problem here. Mm-hmm that is probably going to spill over. We've been ignoring some stuff, and we probably have a lot going on in our home that we haven't addressed. And um, I, I don't know how long that's uh, that's not sustainable to me, to be honest. And this is not from a place of um, jealousy, right? Like, I, it's almost like I would have never thought you would have done that. And you, it's one thing to, it's one thing to think about it, it's another thing to do it. It is, it is a lust in your mind before it happens. But um, we contend with thoughts every day. Mm-hmm. You know, especially as men, we contend with thoughts every day. Mm-hmm. We don't act on them by God's grace. You know? Let me say, so let me, let me piggyback on that. So listen, <clears throat> when it comes to guys and females um, and the idea of like cheating almost, right? I feel like it's, I feel like when we see, we see cheating a lot more easily than they would. For example, I'll give you an example by that. So like, and it, um, not necessarily cheating, but serious enough to where it's like, we got big problems, right? So I'll give you an example. So for example, if, um, <laughs> I'll take it to acting. So I'm an actor, right? I'm an actor. Um, if I'm in a, a scene in a movie and I have to smack a girl's butt, Right? Because where the scene cause? I smack her butt. And that's it. Just got to smack her butt. Adana, I would talk to her about it. She may be okay with it. Maybe not, but she would talk to me about it. But if I had to do it, it wouldn't be explosive to her. If she's in a movie, yeah. and some dude got to smack my wife's behind... That's a big deal. That's not happening. There's no other dude smacking my wife's behind. No way. It's, same with the whole, like, the, the Chris Brown thing. Like, you know, obviously this is a now a step up from that. But, like, if there if there's a picture, same same situation. If there's a picture, let's say you have a, a female friend, long-lost female friend. Let's say, and remember, this is a friend, right? She comes up, jumps up. Hey, Mario! But she jumps up. You're not expecting it, but she jumps up, gives you a hug. And you're like, it may be uncomfortable, but that happened, right? Okay. And then she gets down and your wife is like, that's, what's going on? That's not, you know, you need to talk about that. If some, if your wife ran up on some dude and jumped on him and wrapped her legs around, I'm, that's huge for me. Why is it such a big difference in your opinion? Or first of all, do you agree with what I'm saying? And if you do, why do you feel that is the case? The difference of the level of how men see those actions versus how women can more more accept those type of actions? Well, I think we have a code, an unspoken code among men. And there's checkpoints to this thing. And you really going, you going to cross, if you're going to cross that checkpoint, then that means this. And this checkpoint means this. And I'll be honest with you, and this is a generalization, I think, but I think it, I don't think a lot of women respect each other, right? Like, I don't know that we necessarily have to like each other as men. Wait a minute, let that sink for a second. Let that hold for a second. Because when you're talking about a code, 
we're talking about men and we have a code of respect yeah. towards each other. And you just said you don't feel women have that same code of respect amongst each other. No. That's interesting. I think history has shown us that um, in any patriarchal system that men have this feeling of dominance and this feeling of power over certain things and women in history and time have been in subservient roles and there's been, you know, the cult of true womanhood. There's been this emergence of women now coming into themselves and speaking out about certain things. But I think there is that domestic quality about many women that causes them to suffer in silence and not speak up about it. Whereas men, we are a lot more vocal. Yeah. And so if I feel disrespected, I'm going to say it. Whereas that woman will hold on to it, hold on to it and hold on to it. And um, what I find powerful is that um, women are finding their voice and that they are speaking up about certain things. But that code that you talked about, Mario, is deep. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much that's unsaid that we just know as men. And, you know, history has shown us that wars have happened. <laughs> Nations have been <laughs> over slight, yeah. you know, um, disrespects and um, inappropriate affections. And so um, as we've evolved and sexuality is now something more this, that, and the other open, I feel like, again, men, we are very strong on where we stand and that women are coming into their voice. And I think that, um, especially from a spiritual standpoint, that there's so much that we can put as barriers to help us rem um, keep the sanctity of relationships um, and just say, hey, you know, let's do this. Let's not do this um, because this world is going crazy. You know, there are married people that are even looking for other married groups. Now, yeah. I mean, like the world is going crazy, but thank God that we have a foundation of the word and there are a number of things that we can do to help us keep that spiritual side of it, that code, um, in front of us and relevant, whether we're man or woman. Yeah, I, you know, I, I agree that men, we do have a code. I also think that there are some men who just don't care that there's a code and will Most easy, easily cross that line. Mm -hmm. So in the, like, let's say in the, um, the event that, like, my wife would jump on someone... Uh, don't don't wrap your legs around no one, but to jump on someone and you know there's a an embrace, there's a hug. It just depends on who the man is. I don't know you know if I mean? believe you, no, I'm serious. Right. Unless it's right. your, our daddy or uncle or something. No, like, it, and they're they're probably like a, a super small handful, maybe like one, two, three. I don't, I don't know, two, th three men that it, it just depends on my relationship with that person. But there are I have friends who I know. If given the chance, they would cross the line with my wife. I, I know that. Have mercy. Mm. I know that. Mm. But so if it were one of those friends, nah. Help. Oh, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sunset Friday. I'm sorry. Live. Help him. Help him. Help him. Help him. Help him. Help him. Yes. <laughs> Ain't happening. And I think my wife is. She's definitely wise enough to know that. But if there's like a, I, I can't even imagine like you know what the situation might be. Maybe a person, I don't know. Just, just haven't seen him in twenty years. I don't know what it is. I trust my wife to make those decisions, um, you know, about those kinds of things. But generally speaking, I agree. Like, yeah, don't don't do that. Um, that just kind of generally crosses a line. That uh, you know, <laughs> I can't yeah. I yeah. can't think of a soul that I would think it's okay for her to join. Like, I don't Not care if she ain't see her no. in any. Like, they don't care if her legs are dangling. Like, if her <laughs> arm is around his neck and she holding on tight and he holding her and he looking over her shoulder at me like. <laughs> that's, not, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna feel some type of way. It's gonna be uh, weird. Um, but listen, man, I, I think this this uh, this conversation it, it sucks because we have to close it down, man. We've been here. Uh, we passed that hour mark, but um, this, we might need a part two on this or, or something. Uh, so you guys, let us know uh, down below if you want to see more of this conversation, or also just let us know down below of a topic you want to see uh, some of the guys talk about uh, for guy talk and girl talk. You know, we like to kind of go back and forth and, and have that discussion. Um, but with that being said, um, this is a uh, guy talk with Anthony, Troy, Canil, and Mario. Uh, we appreciate you guys being here today, man. Uh, please let us know what you guys think down low about uh, your definition term of spiritually sexy. Uh, in addition to that, please stay tuned for the next episode of Guy Talk. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys soon. All right? We out of here. Peace. Glory to God for good times, big laughs. The godly life we strive. Turn it up for the king right here. On Sunset Friday Live. Let's go. Hey. Sunset Friday. Sunset hey. Friday. Sunset Friday.